on this Friday morning. We're joined on the line by the still La Rochelle head coach, Ronan Agara. Good morning to you. Hi, Adrian. How's it going? Good. A three-year contract, a, I presume a family decision. I presume a poll was taken. Is that the way this thing works? <laughs> um, yeah, it was. Uh, I think that's, that is most definitely um, top of the agenda, especially with the kids. Um, getting older and some of them hitting secondary school level so it's never easy it's the most difficult part and in my career I think in the fact that um, what impact my decision makes on on, on the family and, and um, it's huge Adrian in that regard because you don't know whether you're doing the right thing and you still don't know and um, it's something that uh, eats away at you quite a bit all right so um I think you remember what secondary school you went to. I remember what secondary school I went to. It's it's uh, it's good days of your, of your life and it's important days. And um, my twins would be going into first year in September, so um, you know there's there's decisions with that, quite big decisions. Um, but I think at the minute um, it's okay where we are. Yeah. Does that mean that over the and like look at I'm asking you to project in a way that maybe you haven't given it much thought that but given your career choice that over the next 10 20 years particularly in those those as your kids as your youngest gets to 18 let's say in sort of college uh, going age is it is it going to are you going to seek that bit of stability almost that like it's difficult to uproot your kids the friends are made they have their routines is that something that you'll it's not that it necessarily needs to be Lara Shell obviously over that period of time but you're less likely to move around almost <laughs> well yes your logic su suggests that but i've been doing the opposite haven't i <laughs> i left in 2013 for for one year to have a look and then i'm still on the road but uh i love being on the road too and the fact that it's just doesn't feel long feels very exciting and it feels uh very interesting but then that's me and that's selfish me but you've got to kind of obviously uh consider what, what's best for your family as well so that's why it was easy for me to stay in um in la rochelle in the fact that i think there's huge ambition in the project here and there's uh there's not a new school for the kids so that was ultimately what it came down to mm. what's the difference between a head coach and a what is it head of team performance um I suppose you kind of uh, you got to combine the pitch with uh, the overall vision. That essentially what it looks like to me, Adrian, and the fact that you'll be um, all over. I suppose everything that feeds into um, La Rochelle performing. So there's a, an awful lot of I suppose hidden work that goes into the first team, and there's an awful lot of I suppose work that's visible to everyone. Um, so it's about just. Um, uh, I suppose you'd be the ultimate decision maker is, mm. is probably the best way of looking at is it. Is there less coaching in that? Or, or No, right. uh, sorry, I hope not. And there won't be in my role, no, because that's what I love doing. And yeah. I think uh, that's very important because I think having watched uh, some people, uh, it, it can be the first uh, area where you may find... Uh, yourself devoting more time to meetings but for me i i have to prioritize the pitch sessions and that's 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 what i love uh i enjoy that side of the game and um i think that's very important that um i'd be i i'd be on the pitch at, at all stages at all times and all over everything of the rugby content that's that's very very important ronan you probably suspected that something like this was coming given how good the season has been going but at the same time once the contract does get signed is there a bit of a fist pump is it a, is it a moment of, of uh, quiet happiness when, when that happens no not really honestly because i think uh, on what i've been aware of is that uh, you know titles are are, are are one thing but you know, once you're part of a staff or part of an organization, uh, if you create the right organization, the right staff, uh, everyone uh, should should feel valued and respected and have a forum to voice their opinion. And, and um, you know, I think that's, that, that's very important. I, I suppose in my style of leadership is the fact that, um, you know, I mean, it's not the building that has good ideas, it's the people within the building. So you've got to surround yourself with good people and there's be uh we're on at its 
at our starting point in that regard and you'd be looking to strengthen that area and you'd be looking to get um the best out of people and that's that's very important you know what i mean there's nearly two i suppose games going on within the game and the fact you have a staff and you have a playing group the playing group it's probably easy enough to manage uh but the staff it becomes tricky because uh, uh the older people get sometimes the more contrary they become and um you have to uh you have you have to manage that and you have to see where their ambition is and you have to see what their vision is and you have to respect that also but you need to keep bringing it back to what's best for the team so um with that i suppose there's also a time where um you know, I mean other people may have been suppressed in previous regimes or they may not have felt valued so you you have to find i suppose a starting point on and then uh, work through it and then see what their vision is and then hopefully it combines with yours other if not it'll be tricky so do you have to take a different tact to being a coach as you are to dealing with staff in the hierarchy of the club for example yeah you would most definitely it's very different it's like um nearly a different job in that mm-hmm. regard because you obviously have the tactics and you have the managing of players but then you have to you mean the players get inspired by 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 the staff so um they need we we need good staff there are certain um certainly good people here at the minute but you can always add to it and you can always i suppose challenge them to make sure that they're they're getting the best out of themselves as well is that structure something that's important to your own and that you're able to make those key decisions around staff or contracts or, or that sort of thing? Is that something that's important to you? Yeah, it has to be. It has to be because that's, that's um, you know what I mean, that's us concentrating on us and the fact that, if, if, you know what I mean, if we are to control and get the best out of ourselves with the staff we have and with the playing group we have, that's one bit, but you've got to remember that all the other clubs in Europe are trying to do the exact same thing and then they're coming with their game plan against you. So uh, if we're not united, settled, uh, driven, how, how do we expect to perform? So we got to make sure that we can, we have a... Um, I, you know, an omnigram that, that that performs and that people are happy contributing to. Um, so uh, that is very, very important. I think especially in France, they like probably having their uh, roles and responsibilities defined in front of other people and then they feel uh, accountable. Mm. Is that is that something that's fairly new to you? I, obviously, you would have fed into the process, I'm sure, and you'd have been on the end of your own contract negotiations as a player. But is that something that's relatively new to you then on that side where you're the one sitting there going, we are giving you a new contract because, or we're not, or we're giving you less money, or whatever the case might be? Are no, they... it's not that new. No, I think it's, it's that's, I think, why it's great with technology nowadays and the fact obviously there's a human side and you have to be able to deliver a message but sometimes uh by delivering images uh through you know, I mean a highlights reel or through um um you know, I mean a video where the player is able to see for himself well actually well that's how i'm performing so i have a brilliant outstanding case of being retained or i'm actually not in that great a position because if you just say it to them without the, I suppose, the images, images are far more powerful than words nowadays. So I think that they, they, unless they're in complete denial, uh, they, they're they able to have a, a frank, honest conversation with you. Mm. And will you look to, like, I know you're saying that obviously you want to sort of continue to do as much coaching as you can. Have you given thought or looked to bring in any other uh, coaches? Or are you thinking that way yet? <laughs> I'm going to take that as a yes. <laughs> I expect an announcement in the next 24 hours. That's oh, what I'm taking that you're as. Some, you're some beauty, isn't it? You just tip away <laughs> gently for seven minutes, eight minutes, proud away. Yes. Um, of That's course, a yes, everything then. is possible. Um, yeah, it will be a yes, uh, whether that comes from within the SPAR environment or whether that comes from outside. Um, the good thing about the CEO and the president here, Adrian, is the fact that uh, the rugby decisions will be mine as long as they're in line with the values of the club. So um, they want to continually improve and they want to get better, uh, but we got to do it. Uh, Respecting what La Rochelle have always done in the past is kind of trying to promote from from within, but also uh, 
you mean trying to be one of the well from now on one of the top top teams in France and in Europe yeah and uh, so how much attention are you paying then when you say about the Espoir or or indeed at other clubs uh, to you know the Felix Jones of these worlds who who are coming through and his situation was slightly different in that he obviously got uh, he got injured and had to leave early but it seemed like the from the people who played with him that that all the indications were there that 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 was something he was very capable of in terms of that coaching role how much attention are you paying to that with the group that you have or or beyond with that in mind Ah, oh, you pay attention to every injury it's it's once you're stuck in it, it's kind of very easy to see. Mm. So, uh, you mean the, the the idea is obviously that you're always trying to get better day by day, and you're always uh, open to suggestions and open to learning. But like, there's the kind of reality with current contract situations that have been done in the past, as opposed to where you want to bring it to. So there's, it's not like you have a blank sheet and you can do exactly as you want. You have to work within some restrictions, but. Uh, if you get your planning right and if you get your, I suppose, your contracting right, then you have a good chance. Could I ask you about uh, Darren Sweetnam, Ronan? Because uh, like, he's obviously had the ability now to go away and, I guess, broaden his horizons, even though he needed to go away and, uh, and get more rugby. Uh, in a way, obviously, you stayed in Ireland throughout your entire playing career because you were at the very top of the pecking order. When you're not at the top of the pecking order, you have that ability to, to go away and, and broaden your horizons, I'd imagine. I presume it's one little positive of perhaps not being the first name on the team sheet as a young Irish player. For Darren, is it? For Darren and for and in general, for, for that sort of player who's in that position about whether or not they stay or go. Yeah, of course, yeah. And I think you're right, because it's with an asterisk, it's, it's a very different decision for every different player because no mm. player's situation is the same. And because Ireland's playing pool is so small... Um, you know, I mean, every decision has to be taken differently. You know, you look at, uh, in Darren's case, he was, uh, I think, probably um, thriving under Razzy Erasmus and, and, and playing well. And then, you know, I mean, for whatever reason, through injury or lack of form, didn't hit the ground running under the next regime. And then, um, you know, he's he's not been contracted for, for next season. So uh, I think... When you know a guy has played for Ireland under Joe Schmidt, he obviously is a quality player. That's that's undeniable. So, uh, from my point of view, it was a case of yeah, we've a lot of injuries in the back three. So uh, get him over, but it doesn't need to be that case. I think for for the guys that are on the fringes, um, are outside the top thirty in in the in the provinces, which is only four provinces. Remember, that's only 120 players. Mm. Uh, you know, beneath that to probably 250. Uh, um, there, there are players that are late developers or for whatever reason overlooked and, and um, they, I suppose it's difficult for them to get an opportunity and that's that seems to be the case everywhere now in the fact that it's hard to get into squads. Mm. Uh, one last one for me on the on the staying put end of things. It struck me last night just thinking about the chat this morning on that, that the clubs you've been at, whether it was Munster, particularly in the latter years, Racing... Crusaders, like they're all elite clubs with massive expectations. You mentioned the ambitions of the club there a few minutes ago. Has, has it surprised you how quickly you've been, I mean, I don't know if underdog is quite the, the right terminology, but certainly they don't have the history of some of those clubs I've mentioned. Has it surprised you how quickly you've been able to adapt to that slightly different dynamic? Yeah, it has surprised me. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but I, uh, the good thing I'm continuously, I suppose, striving to to understand is we don't know our limit so you can't put a, a limit on uh, on sports people because you don't know where it's going to get to so if you're kind of putting uh you mean the ultimate goal to win the champions cup or the top 14 i, I don't think that's a good idea mm. i just think you try and unlock your potential and deep inside all of us we don't know where that is and everyone's limit is very different and you multiply that by uh, different people from different cultures, all genetically uh, different uh, human beings. In our case, in Lara Shell, it becomes so exciting because you see genes and you've uh, South Africans and you've French people and you've uh, New Zealanders and you've Georgians and you have every every kind of different culture. But you mix that together and it can, it can become quite potent if you set up the environment right. And it's not fully right. There's no there's no point saying it is. But uh, it it becomes very exciting um, 
Adrian, when you're when you're when you're driving that, and um, you know the reality is, La Rochelle were uh, second division clubs six years ago. So you know, what I mean, mm. there would be a weak backbone there. There's no doubt about that. But in the current group, uh, you're trying to just get the fortitude mentally to a level where 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 we can hold. And you know, I mean, Leinster will be coming at us hard and coming at us hard. But we need to we need to be able to 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 take that and respond you know because uh, it will be a huge challenge because you know when they're 14 nil down to exeter away from home you, you you think in exeter have this but leinster won comfortably in the end so uh for our guys not to get spooked and uh that's the beauty of, of, of the game and, and it's very very exciting and it's not it's not daunting it's 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 something that you want to test yourself against that point on not setting limits for players is interesting. Like I always remember Jim McGuinness saying that they were completely obsessed with winning the All Ireland in 2012, and it was that sort of that's the thing that drove them. That specific goal. From what you're saying, though, rugby is just a different beast when you've got people coming from all over the world, and the top 14 wouldn't matter, say, from your childhood as much as say an All Ireland would in Donegal, and it has to be different. Yeah. Is is it down to that? Is it as simple as that? Uh, well, yeah. It's it's um, as you say. You know what I mean? It's where we are now, and and the the Bookley and the Champions Cup is 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 very fashionable. But as you said, like a lot of these guys drew, grew up, I suppose, dreaming of playing for their country. Mm. But now they're here. Diversity becomes a very very powerful tool because once we know what we're playing for and why we're playing, then um, then then we have a chance because we have some really good players. But it, the key is to trying to unite these players and get them believing in in a shared identity and a shared goal and. The goal doesn't have to be silverware. The goal can be actually, uh, I want to be as best as I can be, or I want to unlock my potential. I want to, I want to show these guys I can play. But then, all of a sudden, if you win something, what happens next? So people struggle with that. So that was the great thing about the Crusaders was it was just trying to build a dynasty and and keep this thing rolling and be inspired about. Uh, being as best you can and, and and that's I think when you live that once in, in a group or a group that care for each other becomes very powerful You have to go but uh, briefly will you have a fit 10 for Sunday week? Uh, well not this morning <laughs> but <laughs> I'm hoping Sunday week we will yes One of your men too? Um, very much up in the air Right. very much up in the air uh, so two very different injuries one lower body one upper body so um um yeah but uh that happens at this stage of the season too everyone is having niggles and knocks but these are substantial injuries which is sorry maybe not substantial but they're they're injuries that you know i mean you, you need to be right if you're trying to take the pitch you're not giving too much away you're, you're holding a very tight brief for us this morning around between that and this new coach that we're all waiting for the uh... <laughs> <laughs> You've had your porridge. Well done. <laughs> Enjoy the day. See ya. Cheers, Thanks, Ronan. Good Cheers. Cheers. Thank Ronan you. Ronan Garan, the line there from Larry Shalik. Exciting, really exciting times ahead. Like it's, uh, it is an incredible part of the world. His family is obviously um, very well settled there. You're like knee deep in a new culture, not just from a French point of view, but like as we've been discussing there with him, obviously from a rugby point of view from himself as well. Like he's obviously learning so much on the job and driving it on in a fairly significant way for anybody that's been paying any attention to not just how eloquently he talks off the pitch, but how brilliantly they're doing on it. Um, this is one of the true ri rising stars of the world game on. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it is brilliant for him. And like as he said there, it was a, a big family decision and there's no need to, to break something that, that, that's going really good for him on a professional level as well. And I guess the, the new role is going to be exciting as well, whoever those new coaches are that come in and, and work with mm -hmm. him. And, uh, and trying to get that sense of things as well is going to be important because rugby has changed a lot in terms of the coach's role and the, what the head coach does, what the director of rugby does and getting experience and getting the knowledge and actually working in all those different levels. It's going to be something that's going to stand him in good stead. But um, yeah, at least uh, another thing is at least the clamour around when is Ronald O'Gara coming home just quietens down for a few years now. Like yeah. that, that's the thing. I think everybody will just come to a stage of of acceptance that that this is where it is, and uh, let let the people at home get on with their job as well. Yeah, it'll it'll right it'll bubble up again is the thing, right? Probably like he's got a three year contract. It'll bubble up again in two years. It might bubble up before that if Munster are struggling a little bit and. It's it is just such an exciting time, and even if things don't go La Rochelle's way, 
uh, Sunday week or you know that they're not competing as as um, well as they have done this uh, this season next season for the Heineken Cup or in the top 14 like that shouldn't take away from like the bank of experience and nows that this guy's building up in 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 France and we're all obviously thinking very selfishly with a view to trying to bring that home at some point or another he's probably not thinking like that at all at the minute he's thinking I've got a great career here. There's nothing more I need at the minute and uh, we'll see what happens down the track. Um, and we will. And no doubt, I'm sure um, we will see him at this side of the, the water very soon. Plenty of uh, thoughts coming in uh, for Ronan. We'll bring you some of those in just a little bit. Uh, but it is uh, three minutes past eight on this Friday morning. You're watching OTBM. We have loads coming your way with Mark Lawrence in, in just a little bit with a crappy quiz coming as well. Uh, pack show still to come here. We're going to hear from Alan Quinlan in just a little bit as well. We're going to be uh, talking football with Mark as well. But we're back after these with Friday Sports Pages.